Howdy, this is Sailor the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man, coming to you from the island of Puerto Rico. I want to thank you for stopping by, for posting, for answering my questions, and uh, very interesting. Lately, I've had a lot of people, uh, and I've been also observing and hearing and seeing videos, other people talking about the subject of the Latin word, the rapture, which in the Greek is harpasso, the snatching up violently of people. Violently, which means really quickly. According to eschatological context in biblical scripture, Jesus spoke about it in Matthew 24, of that he will call his angels to come down and gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. Some view that as a rapture being caught up by what? Excuse me. By uh, extraterrestrial beings. Angel, angels are extraterrestrial. Christ is extraterrestrial. God the Father, if you believe me, there is such a being, God the Father is extraterrestrial. The scripture says that God is a spirit, and he that worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. When it says in spirit and in truth, that means you can only worship him and connect with him if you're born again. You're born of the spirit, you're born of water. Water is interpreted to mean his word. That's the only way. Outside of that, you're blind to scripture. If you have not been born again, you're gonna do a lot of speculating and it's basically gonna be theory and you're not gonna be accurate. Remember, speculation is not orthodoxy. It's not the correct teaching. Jesus taught one way one teaching and so how I hold to it is there's a a correct teaching and there's an incorrect teaching I used to argue that all the time and my brother used to always say well what is your opinion well you know when it comes to the text of scripture I tend to do inductive studies which means I allow the text I allow the author to speak and communicate to his audience what he's trying to relay to his audience. Remember, we're 2,000 years far from scripture. And in the first, you have to look at it in time and space. You have to look at it in context. Who was that person that was writing or was dictating to what community? For example, Matthew was written by Matthew, one of the apostles. Practically every single biblical scholar agrees with it. I'm just using this as an example. So Matthew's written to Matthew. He was in, in the land of Palestine writing to a Jewish community, Jewish community that believed in Yeshua Messiah and Christ Jesus, Jesus and Nazareth. So how do we know that through inductive study, he begins with the genealogy he shows the prophecies of the Old Testament in reference to Jesus, the Messiah, coming. The Magi that came from the East. But nothing explains within that text who the Magi are. So when we begin talking about the Magi, there's nothing in Scripture within itself that speak as to who these individuals were. There's two of them. Yes, I see. And so... <laughs> and so... Um, it's important to us to understand this, that anything else is basically speculating if you do the inductive study. Now, people have taken to outside, outside sources, to historical records, to ancient myths, ancient speculation as to who these magis were. Historically, we know in Greek the word magi magician comes from where magician it's in reference to those that lived in Persia those that lived in, in ancient Babylon 
And we find that to be true because we have uh, inductive prophetic word as it to pertains to Daniel. Daniel was among people of Magi. If you read Daniel from 1 through 4, you realize he was among them. Now, many say that the Magi, many outside sources say the Magi were the Zoroastrians. And there's a debate about that. So, we find that the Zoroastrians have their own gospel. Now, we find that Daniel, if you read the book of Daniel, became a great leader. And he prophesied certain things to come. Did he prophesy the Messiah? Yeah. He prophesied the, of the Messianic age. But everything's not known what Daniel has spoken. He just wrote what he wrote to communicate certain truths, certain prophecies to the children of Israel. What's to come to us? There were no Christians at that time. So when Daniel was writing, he wasn't writing to Christians. He was writing to the children of Israel, pertaining to what was going to happen in the last days. And to look out to look out for what? So, in that context, we can view Daniel in speaking about the Messiah. We can view Isaiah speaking about the Messiah, Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. Nowhere in Scripture, only vaguely where it talks about that with from the Gentiles will come a group to, to worship the God of Israel. That fulfilled itself. So when we talk about prophecy, we have to remember to allow the scripture to interpret itself. I'm not one to look at outside source, look to astrology, look to archaeology, look into anthropology without first learning the text itself. That's an error. You cannot begin with a theory and then go into scripture and try to twist the scripture to agree with what your point of view is. You must let the text speak, and wherever it takes you, that's where you're supposed to go. So in going back in reference to, the, to this event, a lot of people say that the rapture was never spoken of, was never spoken of by the early church fathers. That's not true. When a person comes and says that, that and says, oh, it was, it was back in the 16th, 17th century that this, that this theological development happened, well, then they haven't, they haven't studied the scriptures because the scriptures actually speak on it. Peter speaks on it. Paul speaks on it. Jesus speaks on it. It's in, the Mark, it's in Mark 13. It's in Luke. In the Old Testament, there's reference to uh, the gathering the uh, uh, at the Mount of Olives. But those that are prone to scientific inquiry tend to use a scientific method. And that's incorrect. Because the scientific method is, deals all about observation. So how can you use a scientific method if you wasn't there to observe what was going down? <laughs> So in that sense, you have to be very, very careful because a lot of these academics, a lot of these people that history have biases, they were not born again, their writings are not inspired by God, they're not inspired by the Holy Spirit, and so they tend to the tendencies is isn't to be to be and commit error. I want to read you something if I when I studied philosophy, I studied what I could on history. What time avail me is it's, it's a lot of study, but then there's a lot of errors that can be committed in uh, in implying certain things mean certain things, and 
it's very difficult you don't know the ancient text and you really don't have a professional understanding of the Greek language spoken of spoken of 2,000 years ago and you could be well intended in your speculation but you could be dead wrong and with scripture saying this is what God said this is what God means and you're making a commentary you you can be very close in to creating a heretical teaching that's not of God but you got to be careful I want to read something here it's very important in Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 it says as ye have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord as personal Savior so walk in him rooted and built up in Christ established in what the faith according to Christian doctrine it is by grace through our faith that one receives Christ Believing in Christ that he's the Lord and Savior. He's the Messiah. Here it says, As ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So obviously in Colossians, these people had already been taught. This was written by Paul, who never went to Colossians, but had a couple of brethren to go there and teach there, telling them, this is how you do things. And he goes, this is the warning. That I let you know, do you be careful? Colossians 2 8. Beware lest any man spoil you. In some other texts, I'm going to change it. But this one, this is the King James Version. Beware lest anyone spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after rudiments of the world and not of Christ. Okay, through philosophy, which is vain deceit, after the traditions, cultural traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not of and not after Christ. Now I'm gonna put it the literal standard version. It says, see that no one will be carrying you away as spoil through philosophy and vain deceit according to the tradition of men according to the rudiments of the world and not after according to Christ let me show you another this is the revised standard version take heed lest there shall be anyone that make a spoil of you through his philosophy vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world Okay, this is another one. This is the tree life. It said, see that no one takes you captive through philosophy, empty deception. Empty deception. According to the traditions of men and basic principles of the world rather than Messiah. Okay, the Passion Translation. Beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic. For they operate with humanistic and cloudy judgments based on the mindset of this world system and not anointed troops of the anointed one. That's deep. Again, beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic. For they operate with humanistic, which means self-centered human, the humans being the center of the universe instead of God being the center of the universe, Clouded judgments based on the mindset of this 
world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. For he, Christ, is the complete fullness of deity in living form. He came in flesh. And our own completeness is found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows with us. He is the head of every kingdom authority in the universe. So, when it comes to the teaching, scriptural teachings, the center of everything is the Messiah. Whatever the Messiah says, the teaching, his teachings is preeminence over everything. Why? Because he's God. Right in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God in the beginning. All things come from him before the foundation of the earth, according to Revelation, the Lamb of God was slain. So a lot of things were predestined, a lot of things were, or, were ordained. So when we begin to look in astrology, instead of into biblical text, we can commit great error in our speculation and our postulation as what, what actually happened. The danger of that is you remove Christ and you put man to the situation. And so you're, by what you're saying, your speculation and your theory, you're believing, you believe in creation more than the creator. And so you end up being reprobate. You end up continually in that process. It leads you away from Christ. It leads, it leads you to prideful, into intellectual, uh, you know, you can see yourself as this great intellectual. I know it's. I know something that you don't know. And so you have to remember, you're not going to know everything because you're not God. But the essentials of what you need to know is in Scripture and is what Christ said. And his disciples says, because the Scripture clearly says in Acts chapter 2, and they kept the teachings of the apostles who were taught by Christ. And if you're a Christian and you're a believer, that's where you have to be. So whatever they said, whatever they wrote, and the scripture clearly says it was inspired by God, that a man of God can be what? Thoroughly furnished for all good things. What is inspired by God? The biblical text is inspired by God. Scientific books are not inspired by God. It's inspired by man. And they tend to give the glory, and they tend to say, oh, you know, I thank uh, author so-and-so, scientist so-and-so, for writing the foreword, for his research, instead of saying, thank you, Jesus, that you've made known to us the kingdom of God. And so that will lead you away. It happened during the scientific revolution. And it continues on to this day where they try to figure out the historical Jesus outside of the biblical text. Yet, they deny all the witnesses that are in the biblical text. The scripture clearly says two or three witnesses. Well, Paul writes that during his time of his ministry, there were over 500 witnesses that were still alive, that saw the written Christ, saw the ascended Christ, saw Christ's ministry, yet men today don't believe in what jesus said if jesus says that he's going to gather up his church if paul says that there's going to be in the twinkling of the dead in christ shall rise and we that will be caught up in the air amen and we could speculate on when it's going to happen yada 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 but the facts are this event was in the biblical text it was taught in the first century and it's it's going to go down whenever we can all give our opinions to it what matter is when he decides it's going to go down you and i don't know that god is sovereign god has delayed and many times you read the biblical text prophecies have gone out said it's going to be destroyed and he held back his anger for 100, 125 years. So all the speculating is not about whether it's going to happen. Because the text clearly teaches that. But the debate that a lot of people have, when it's going to happen. So then they end up looking at exterior Bible texts 
to kind of like say, hey, you know, I think I got the answer. See, that's vain. That's pride. You do not know the answer. You have you're speculating, and you're 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 dealing in theoretical. See, the scripture is not about theoretical. The prophet said, "This is going to go down. It's going to go down. Just no qualms about it." So, my take on the rapture is: believe in the biblical text. Believe in it. It is. A, it's going to be a literal happening. What's going to happen when that happens? Nobody knows. It hasn't happened yet. You know, people create, oh, it's going to be great disasters. Planes are going to fall. Things are going to happen. I have no idea exactly how that is going to, all we have is speculation. What is important to me is that I get caught up. That if you believe in Christ and you're part of his body, the church, then you get caught up. That's the main thing. The scripture says, watch and pray. Watch for what? Watch for the signs. What are some of the signs? Right there in the text to tell you. In Matthew 24. What will happen to the sun? What will happen to the moon? The Bible clearly says it. What is going to happen in Israel? It says it. We don't know about the restraint. Who is restraining the, the evil one from control? taking total control we don't know but i know that the restrainer is someone and it's it says he is part of, that's that's going to pull back personally i think it's archangel michael who has a history within the text he debated over moses's body you know who won the battle there because in the transfiguration the disciples saw moses <laughs> We find at the very end of the age that it's not God himself. We know the Holy Spirit is God. It's not God himself that takes Satan and his angels and casts them to the lake of fire. It's God's angels. We also find in the text where Michael's warring against the dragon. And what happened to the dragon? He was cast to the earth. By who? By Michael uh, the archangel so for me the restrainer and like I said I don't know for sure but I take a position and I say this is my interpretation on it based on what inducted if you have something that you believe in make sure it's based on scripture that you can go to scripture and you can say this is why I believe this not science not astrology not archaeology but because the text which is inspired by god speaks it so well that's it for me sailor the piper man piper the sailor man until next time my friends ciao